All right, so we've got two lessons that we're cramming together here, finding slope and rate of change, and the next one, graphing equations of lines. All right, so when we get to the graphing the equations of lines, have yourself some graph paper handy. You might print out some graph grids from my website. They're pretty nice. Okay, so our, our objectives are plentiful. We've got four of those things. Number one, we're going to be finding the slope of a line given two points. Something that's pretty easy, something you did last year in geometry. You did it in Algebra 1. You're going to do it here again. Number two, we're going to classify a line based on its slope. So if I give you the slope, can you tell me something about that line? Or if I saw the line, could I guess something about the slope without having some points? Number three, we're going to be finding the slope of parallel and perpendicular lines. Again, that's something that you did in geometry and algebra one. You're probably even going to do it in pre-cal next year. And then finally, we're graphing the equation of a line if it was in slope intercept or standard form. So let's go ahead and get started here with finding slope between two points. And of course, the picture is illustrating slope, something that's not, you know, perfectly vertical. It's sloped. It's got some sort of incline. And that looks like maybe a little bit too much fun in that picture. Okay, so slope, anything that isn't completely vertical has a slope, and that's just a number that we use to describe, well, its steepness, its number, its uh, level of incline or decline. So what you see here in the picture, uh, that's the Leaning tire, Tower of Pisa, of course, and uh, what tourists are always doing whenever they go there they take this kind of snapshot you're gonna see it at least one more time in this in this uh, set of videos there you know it's just based on perspective if you're far, far enough away and you have your camera just the right angle it it looks very convincing that she is pushing down that tower okay so rate of change slope can be used to describe an average rate of change what I'm talking about here is um, uh, a rate of change is how much one quantity, usually it's an x value, well in algebra it is, or a y value, uh, how much it changes relative to another quantity. And now it doesn't have to be x's and y's, it could be just anything in the real world. It could be, uh, say for example, distance versus time, something like that. How much one of those quantities is changing while the other one is changing. Okay? For slope, we always measure how much y changes relative to x, right? It's always y over x, rate of change. So on exercise one, describe some real world rates of change. So some, something uh, practical would be, well here, you think about it for a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen to you. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, that one's pretty good. All right, so if, if you can't hear this, if you can't hear that um, where you're at on your computer, um, w somebody just said, how about whenever you're driving, how fast you're going? Miles per hour, that's a rate of change. And uh, somebody else said, if, you, if you're working on a job and you get a pay rate, that's a rate of change, how much money you are making per hour. Right, very good. Okay, so here's another one. Um, as a matter of fact, I ran into this uh, just recently this summer trying to get my roof patched up because of a hailstorm. And one of the things that they talk about is the pitch of your roof. Okay, so the slope or pitch of the roof just measures how steep the thing is. How do you think a contractor, so let's say a guy is going to come out to my house and he sees, oh, you've got some shingles missing from your roof. And uh, how's he going to measure the slope of that roof? And he wants to know the slope of this roof because uh, he might charge you more if it's pretty steep. So think about it for a second. If, if that's a diagram of my, pic of my house, it's kind of boring looking house, how would you measure the slope of it? Well, you need rise over run. But in a pra practical sense, you don't have a piece of graph paper. You're not holding a piece of graph paper up to it. You've got to use something like a level and a tape measure. And this is ordinarily what they'll do. Is they'll take a 12 inch level. That's one of those long things that has a little uh, a glass cylinder and it has a bubble in it. And if you hold it different ways, the bubble moves, right? And you just have to get it right in between the two little lines. 
to make it perfectly level. Level just means it might be horizontal or it might be perfectly vertical or at a 45 degree angle. Anyway, so you hold that level and then you measure the distance away from the roof in inches with your tape measure. And your pitch is just however many inches of rise there is for every 12 inches of run. Horizontal run. Okay. So how we learn it in a math class, of course, we're not using a level and a tape measure. We're just given some points on a graph and we're still measuring rise over run. So on a graph, what measures rise? Oh, wait a minute. I can, I see that something's misspelled in here. Here, let me fix that. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so how do we measure rise? Upwards and downwards. This is the Y coordinates. Okay, and then run. Run is left and right. It's horizontal. That's the X coordinates. So if we're talking about how much rise we are, we subtract the X coordinates, divided by, subtract the X. Uh, did I say that right? I subtract the Y coordinates, divided by, subtract the X coordinates. Okay change in y over the change in x. Do you remember this? Ooh, remember this symbol from perhaps chemistry? Maybe you did it in another math class as well. Delta y over delta x. It means change in y over change in x. Now, does this really mean that I have to always go, if I give two points, I have to do the second one minus the first one, second one minus the first one? Answer is no, you don't but you just want to keep it in the same order on the top and the bottom. What would happen if you didn't? That's right. It would be different by a sign. You might say that the answer is positive when it's supposed to be negative or vice versa. So here's a practical uh, slope question. Regulations state that a handicap ramp must not exceed one inch of rise for every linear foot of run. True story. Uh, if the maximum rise of a handicap, handicap ramp, it's tough to say, is 2.5 feet, what is the longest horizontal length of any handicap ramp, right? And, and now think of this, like think of someone that's in a wheelchair. Why would they not want um, a steeper ramp than this? Just think about I'm trying to get up that ramp. Oh, okay, anyway, so since this rate of change, this ratio basically is in and says uh, rise over run of course, rise over run and this says one inch to every one foot but my rise is in feet, it's in 2.5 feet well that's not a problem, how many inches are there in a foot? there are 12 inches in a foot so I multiply that times 2.5 so 2 times 12 24, and then half of, tw uh, half of 12 is 6. That gives me 30 inches. Okay, watch how easy this one's going to be. So I have 30. Why did I draw that vertical line? Let me erase it. Okay. Equals 30 inches over x feet. How do you solve these kind of problems? Ordinarily, you would just you know, you just cross multiply, right? So I'd have 1 times x, which is x, is equal to 30 feet. So you're not allowed to have a handicap ramp longer than 30 feet or you get in trouble. And you, you also have, you know, handicapped people rolling backwards, hurting themselves on their, their wheelchairs. Okay. All right, so this is usually how we see it in algebra. I get two points. And I want to find the slope between those two points using the slope formula. So, I usually write m for slope because there's an m in slope. Slope is equal to, now I need change in y over change in x. And it doesn't matter which order the, these start off in. You can start them in whatever order you want. So, if I say negative 5 minus a negative 2, so that y minus this y, I have to keep it in the same order for the bottom. So negative 4 minus 6. Of course, those double negatives get rid of them. Up top, I have a negative 3. And on the bottom, a negative 10. A negative divided by a negative makes it positive. So our slope is 3 tenths. Here's a question for you to consider. Is that very steep? If you have 3 tenths for your 
slope of your line. Is that real steep or not? Hmm. Something to ponder. Anyway, last exercise for this video. Find the value of k such that the line passing through these two points, look, I've got some missing coordinates there, has a slope of negative 1. So the way that we're going to do this is that we just set it up as in I'm going to find the slope between these two points, just pretending like nothing's wrong, and then at the end set it equal to negative 1, and then finally solve for k. All right. So my slope is change in y over change in x. So I'm going to start with the 2k here. 2k minus a negative, so plus 5, over, now keep it in the same order, negative 4 minus k. So there's me calculating the slope. And now what is that slope supposed to be equal to, to for these two points? It says negative 1. OK. So this is a proportion, and we solve proportions by cross-multiplying. You might look over here on the right-hand side and go, oh, but I only have negative 1. That's OK. Let's just put it over 1. OK, and so now what you're supposed to do is cross-multiply and set the cross-products equal to each other because the cross-products of a proportion are always equal. So the first cross-product we have is just 2k plus 5 is equal to the other one just multiplying it by a negative one so it's going to change both signs 4 plus k all right let's subtract the k over make that k subtract the 5 over equals negative 1 k is equal to negative 1 which is the same as the slope purely coincidental purely coincidental all right 